Hi there guys, welcome to another Chem Complete video for the Ether series in Organic Chemistry 2. This video is going to be a short one. We're right on the heels of the Williamson Ether Synthesis, and I mentioned that there was a second way we could create ethers. Uh, these are really the two major ways that are utilized. So Williamson Ether Synthesis, which was covered in last video, and today we are going to talk about alkoxy mercuration. And this should be familiar because we used a very similar process in organic one when we did alkene synthesis. So we would take alkenes and we would hydrate them using an oxymercuration demercuration process. It's going to be almost identical. Now I want to just take a second to stop here and say if you're interested in more details about this reaction I would strongly encourage you to go and view that organic one video where we talked about the oxymercuration. We're not going to go through mechanistic portions or anything here. We're simply going to reevaluate this as to how we could create ether. So I just wanted to sort of get that out of the way. Um, so to give you an example, you have to start with an alkene, just like we did when we did our hydrations. So I will draw a basic alkene up here. And the reagents are going to be almost identical as they were last time. So I need a source of mercury 2 plus. The common source you see in a lot of these chapters is the double acetate mercury. So it's Hg with two OAC groups. Just a quick reminder, OAC. And you should really get pretty familiar with this by the time you're in organic 2. This is the OAC group, okay? And AC stands for acetyl, which is this group right here. So OAC... The acetyl group is really a carbonyl group with a CH3. So, for instance, if I have acetic acid, that's just the carboxylic acid version that has the acetyl group. So, anytime you see AC, uh, that's what that represents there. So, just get that out of the way. So, I need my mercuration. I also need to pick out the other reagent that's going to go along with this. And what we used to do was put water here. And water would take away the double bond and give a Markovnikov addition of the uh, alcohol, the OH, the hydroxyl group. So in this case, instead of using water, I'm simply going to substitute in an alcohol that I would like to become an ether. So that R group is going to be important that I choose for the alcohol. And we'll go through a specific example after this. And we finish up with NaBH4. This reagent should now be very familiar to you if you've gone through the alcohol lectures, which come before the ether lectures. This is a reducing agent, the NaBH4. And now you can have a greater appreciation for using this reagent um, whereas in organic one, we didn't really discuss what sodium borohydride was. So what's going to happen here is just like when I did a hydration, I'm going to get a Markovnikov addition. But instead of OH, I am now going to end up with OR. And this came directly from the OR found here on the alcohol. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all you really need to know here. There was a CH3, okay? So that's what made it Markovnikov. It came to the tertiary position versus the secondary position down here. By definition, that's the Markovnikov product. So maybe go and review that if you don't remember about Markovnikov products. So let's just take one quick look at an example. What We'll do one or two where this would apply, all right? So we'll do an open chain, and then we'll do another cyclic one. So let's say that this is my alkene, and I'm going to create one of these as a more highly substituted position. And I will go ahead and I'll use my HgOAC2, should be in parentheses. And what I will choose to use, we'll start off simple, let's do methanol, and then we'll make it a little more complicated next time, but not a whole lot. So that'll be reagent one. I polish off with the sodium borohydride in order to get the uh, mercury intermediate off of the chain. And so what I would end up with here okay, is, and you can do wedged or dashed for either of these. It doesn't really matter um, because you're going to get a mixture of the two products. But what I would have here is one of these, and I'll just keep the wedge as the alcohol, would be OCH3. 
and that comes from this portion of the methanol and then I also still have the methyl group that would be behind there all right so let's take a look at one more this time we'll use a five membered ring and when we do this um, you know what why don't we have kind of a peculiar looking double bond that's coming off of the ring why don't we actually do that so there's the alkene okay double bond and this time I'm going to enlarge it to give you a slightly larger one we'll use the HG OAC2 and then we will also go ahead and let's say that this time we're going to do propanol instead of just methanol right there we go so we're going to do propanol and again polish off with sodium borohydride and ABH4 so what I would get here while I take a look this is a primary position here and when I come in here this is going to be if you can look here if this is technically a carbon this is going to be a tertiary position so I will most definitely come in to this position right here right so that would mean that when I finish this the well you know what uh, let me undo that for a second because I want to give some stereochemistry to that so right here right I will have CH uh, I'm sorry I will have O CH2 CH2 CH3 and then down here I will again have a CH3 so this CH3 was really this CH2 that was hanging off the side here the sodium borohydride provided an extra hydrogen that came into this carbon and then the OCH3 this added Markovnikov when we had this O propyl group that attached based on this alcohol so that covers the alkoxy mercuration demercuration process again if you have any issues go back and check out the regular hydration version the oxymercuration with regular alkenes from organic one and other than that that about covers creation of ethers those are the two major pro uh, processes that we go through the Williamson ether synthesis and this alkoxy mercuration demercuration process so the next thing we're going to take a look at is reactions of ethers now that we've learned how to make them and when we get to reactions of ethers if you saw the first video where we were talking about properties of ethers and naming ethers we said there's only one major type of reaction and that is ether cleavage when we use a strong acid so we will get into that in the next lecture uh, in the meantime if you have any questions feel free to leave comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible and if you like the video I would greatly appreciating uh, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up and if you would like to subscribe that'll keep you up to date with everything so I will see you guys in the next video and thanks a lot for stopping by